And now let's look at the second phase of our experimentation. The second phase of our experimental research began with the replication experiment. And we decided to replicate the first target experiment, that is with the pH going up one full pH unit. We selected a number of sites in the US and in Europe. And for the three initial intention host sites, we had a control site within two to 20 miles of each other. That's where we started the replication experiment. Identical equipment was shipped from the manufacturer directly to these three sites. Our home site here in Arizona, a site in Kansas, and a site in Missouri. And fresh water was delivered from the manufacturer to these sites. Basically, we taught the people at those other sites how to to perform the experiment. And then they became competent and they ran background experiments, continuously running the measurement of pH with his system for about three months before we inserted an intention host device in each site. And we found that in all three sites, the pH followed the procedure described earlier and the pH climbed exponentially by about one pH unit at each of these three sites. So we were gloriously happy. We had achieved replication by others of that particular experiment. Now the surprising thing to us was what happened at the control sites. The same apparatus the same water was being measured there, but there never was an intention host device at those sites. And yet when we looked at the data, the data was almost identical to what we found at the intention host sites. To us, this was quite remarkable because it indicated that there was macroscopic scale room temperature information entanglement between the intention host sites and the control sites. Now this information entanglement was very different than quantum entanglement, which occurs near absolute zero and with small size objects. Here, we're talking about spaces that were several hundred to several thousand cubic feet in size, and all of it being done at room temperature. Very interesting phenomenon, this information entanglement. So we decided to pursue it a little bit, to try to understand it better. So we thought, okay, let's put the next two US sites to work as control sites for these Arizona, Missouri, and Kansas intention host sites. So the equipment there was set running, gathering background information, and again, there never had been an intention host device at those sites. And within two months, we found that the pH had gone up exponentially, the order of 0 0.8 pH units. So again, now the information entanglement had expanded from 2 to 20 miles to 1,000 to 1,500 miles. Getting very interesting. This figure shows that the pH rises exponentially to attain a magnitude of about 0 0.86 pH units upwards. And this figure shows another control space where the pH has gone upward in an exponential fashion and it's a little noisier than the previous one, but still very clear and clean results. So now we decided, okay, let's use the 
European sites, the one in the UK near London and the one in Milan, Italy. They had the similar European brand equipment set up there and never an intention host device being at those sites. Well, the UK site came online first and within three weeks, the pH had gone up one full pH unit. And then the Milan site came online about three months later. And at this site, the pH went up one full pH unit within one week. So very remarkable results. So now the information entanglement extends at least 5,000 to 6,000 miles. Truly remarkable phenomenon. So, so when we look at this data, we, we see two things. Not only do we see the achievement of replication at 10 sites, but we see this remarkable phenomenon of information entanglement between all these sites. Amazing stuff.